Okay. Okay. This is, uh, I'm Tiger David. This is uh, off grid at the Red Rock Sawmill. The date is November 14th, 2015, Saturday. And our subject today is wood stove install part one of I don't know. So before I get started, I wanted to go over the five basic points of these videos. I'm going to turn this to make sure that I've got it. I've got it set right. <clears throat> the five main points of the, the video is basic work uh, skills and safety. Uh, for me to share projects, uh, inspire people to build something. Also to help people to connect and ground with nature. And also uncover internal creativity and self-sufficiency. Those are the five points of the things that uh, I think I can pay forward. Uh, so anyway, our subject today again is... Uh, I'm going to talk about installing this wood stove. This is a, a bigger project than I thought. But before we start that, I wanted to explain. Yesterday, I did my first video. I watched it. I haven't posted it yet, but it was pretty good. I thought it was okay. Um, why Red Rock Sawmill? I'll show you real quick. Because I'm developing my property, and when I started clearing it, um, I, I didn't want to uh, throw any wood away. I wanted to save the wood because it's a natural resource. <clears throat> but the the main thing that I'm doing is I'm creating a sawmill here and from the sawmill Red Rock sawmill I'm gonna have different products so on and so forth but I'm gonna actually show you real quick my sawmill I've only used it a couple times so let's kind of do that because it's strange it's probably strange well why Red Rock sawmill what's he talking about sawmill so here's why <clears throat> and I'll do a video on that later but this is my sawmill. See, that's a 36 inch uh, band sawmill on a track that's. My track is. Oh, what is it? Is that 18 feet? 18 or. Yeah, it's 18 or 20 to 20 feet, something like that. But I can cut, I can mill a, um, I can mill a 36 inch diameter tree and I've got a lot of elm trees and oak trees in the back of my property that I'm going to bring up with my bulldozer and I'll turn it into flooring or fireplace mantles. I've already cut a few things, but <clears throat> while I'm setting that up, I'm also have to set up a workshop. Let's set this down. Make sure I got the good. I'm not the best film guy in the world. <clears throat> That'll work. It's good enough. So that was the sawmill. Okay, so we're going to talk today about wood stove installation. And this is just basic. So when I, when I start putting these parts together and things of this nature, um, the, if you want exact mechanical specifications um, that's probably not that's what you're not going to get here I'll give you basic like I took this stuff out of the box I figured out did my research that's the kind of stuff I want to pay forward but you know you got to read the instruction sheets so on and so forth <clears throat> but before I get into that I wanted to talk to you about a little bit of, uh, about uh, psychology off-grid sometimes I get overwhelmed because I, I bite off more than I can chew like <clears throat> today I said okay well, I'm going to come out here to my sawmill and uh, my, my property and I'm going to install this wood stove. And I started opening up this box and looking at this. I'm like, man, I'm not going to get all this done today. So, um, but I'll get enough done and I'll have to piece it. I don't know how long these things take. This is a job. This is a con like a contractor job, but I'm already committed to it and I'm not going to have other people come in here and do it. I, I do it myself. But before we talk about that, I want to show you how to step, 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 step. Okay. So my first project, here's my first project, okay? So here's what I want to talk to you about. This little windmill right here, okay? So this was my, <clears throat> this was my first project that I did. And uh, like I said, if you saw the other video, I have a background in agriculture. I've worked on property, land, farming, cattle, whatever, my whole life on and on. A lot, when, you know, in, before my early 20s, uh, that's what I did. 
<clears throat> and then I lost a lot of those skills going into the workplace, working on a computer all the time, marketing, so on and so forth. <clears throat> but anyway, I found this in a in, in storage, and uh, this this had sat in a box for uh, probably 15 years. I broke it out. It took me three times to put this thing together before I got it down. <clears throat> and and I got frustrated because I said to myself, "Man, how am I going to do all this? How am I going to?" How am I going to come out here and develop this property off-grid and figure all this out if it takes me half a day to put together something that used to take me 20 minutes to put together? Well, long story short, um, patience. And those skills started coming back, and those skills started coming back. And it took me about, you know, four hours to put this thing together. Well, I could put it together probably in 10 minutes or less now, okay. But I had to get used to holding screws and, you know, reading instructions and all that kind of stuff so that was my first project small this was my second one okay this was an outdoor water shower okay now this was uh this was a little bit more intense <clears throat> this was a little bit more intense than that one obviously i had to i had to buy lumber get the tank and, and build all that but there's a lot too that i had to build a pad shower i'm going to do a video especially on that water shower that was my first property project so a little windmill I did in my garage, and then this one I did on my property, my first project. I'm proud of it. I wanted it to be right, and I got it done. And then my third project was uh, actually getting my bulldozer, learning how to drive it, starting to clear, um, so on and so forth. So I guess the message that I want to say with that is you have to be patient and don't get overwhelmed because in on the grid and when we by the way most people think we learn to live deadline oriented it has to be done by this time it has to happen like this and we all learn that and I've learned that and when a person starts to move off grid meaning um, it may rain a little bit um, yeah start to sprinkle uh, when they move off grid with their thinking a little bit that's that's what I'm into is moving off grid off grid with uh, your utilities your lifestyle but also your thinking think a little bit different not too rushed you you plan and then when you start doing things may change a little bit like today I'm only gonna get so much done but I don't want to get stressed out that's why when I <clears throat> pick a project I'll pick one or two or three and I'll start in it but if, if I if I don't get it accomplished it's that personality that I, in, in the business world that I had to get it done and what I have to learn going off grid is it gets done when it gets done so that's kind of a little psychology and the reason I'm sharing that is if anybody gets out there and you start doing your thing and you have a hard time you have a hard day that's today I mean it may rain a little bit may throw me off I'm a little bit frustrated because of uh, this is going to take longer than I thought I'm not getting it done what I wanted to get done today so I have to kind of set back and just center and chill and go as far as I can and pick up tomorrow or the next day or next week whatever I don't get done so that's just something I want to share in case you ever come across that you're not alone. So let's get to the basics over here, or the, the, the focus today, which is the installation. So I'm going to bring the camera in here real quick just to show you where we're at um, with the stove. So there's my stove, my wood stove right there. Yesterday what I did was I put wood in it and I and I set a fire inside of it outside to kind of uh, get the smell of the paint uh, Where I won't have to smell the paint once it's installed and I'm going to install it right here in this corner. Okay So since the cameras in here Reset this thing real quick Well My, my camera thinks primitive so I'm just gonna have to point with my foot so right there okay is about four feet and right there is about four feet so there we go right there and there that's about where I'm gonna lay some cinder blocks and I'm gonna put some cinder blocks up in here <clears throat> to d dispel the heat I'll show more of that once it's installed like I said today I wanted to get this chimney and uh, show you what I'm doing there that's the hole that I cut out. So, just in short, I'll show you this part today. And I don't know if I'm going to learn video editing. I don't know if I have time for it or whatever. But uh, I'll put like part one or two or three just so you guys can see. But what I've done here is, um, and that was a lot of instructions, you know. I mean, <laughs> I, I got that, that, that 
chimney section out here, and it's like there's a lot of parts to this thing. But in short, what I had to do is I had to cut a 14 and a uh, quarter diameter circle, give or take, and I still have to frame it. I still have to finish framing it, but there's a metal piece that's going to go on the outside, and then this part is going to slide over it, slide over it, and then there's uh, some flashing that goes around it, and then the stove goes here, and then with black pipe you build up and go into there. I'm not doing that today. What I'm doing now is I'm just trying to get this hole plugged up. So we'll go outside and I'll show you that part. I'm just going to show you the parts today. Because I'm kind of running behind and I, I need to get this done. And I just I'm just kind of having an off day today. Just I had a good day yesterday, but sometimes I have off days, and today's kind of an off day, but whatever. Everybody has off days. If you don't have an off, if you have perfect days every day, I want you to call me and tell me what you're doing because I want to know. If you have good days every single day with no problem, I am your number one fan. I think the key is whenever you have an off day, just center and accept it. Boom, this is what I got to do. So where I'm at, keep going. So there's the hole I cut out. So this is flashing that goes on the outside, and I got to put screws in there, but you can see that fits in there. I'm going to square that up real nice because I like to do good work. I don't like shoddy, shoddy work that's crooked. Not me. I don't like that. So. That's up. And I'm going to have to put some sealant all the way around that in these parts. I want to show you the parts. So <clears throat> I'll probably show this, the parts, and then uh, I'm going to build this and then I'll show once once this other stuff is in, once this, these other items are installed, I'll show that as well. What's kind of cool is I had to. I had to use my power tools. Um, I had to use my power tools today, and I was able—I was able to run my power tools without running the generator. They don't—they don't require a lot of electricity. All right. So anyway, in short, there's a lot of parts. There's a lot of parts to this. So, this part goes outside and attaches to the wall, and then here's another part that sits on top of here and sets in there. We'll do this like that. And then... This is a chimney. I'm still, I'm still reading up on all this. So, like I say, what I'm going to just do today is just show you the part. This is a Dura, uh, Dura vent, D-U-R-A, and I did some research and yeah, Dura vent. That's probably the best in the industry. Um, the through the wall vent kit was about. Three hundred dollars. I got it with a discount, and then the chimney parts. These are about a hundred bucks a piece. So I got five hundred bucks in this chimney, but I didn't have a choice. You can't just put a you can't just put a pipe through the chimney. This pipe is um, insulated. So you can see there's an inner pipe, insulation, and the outer pipe. So that looks like stainless. That's stainless steel. That's not galvanized. So. That won't rust, not for a long time anyway. The purpose of that is the insulation is so the pipe doesn't get hot. And also this causes a backdraft to pull hot air, to pull the air out, which lets oxygen go in the stove to help burn it. This is my first wood stove installation. I don't know a lot about it, but I know enough to do it and to frame that. And I've got to bring those instructions home and read them tonight. But like I said, when I came out here, this is what I was going to do. When I open this box up, I'm like, man, this is a job. So 
I'll go as far as I can. This is a spark arrester. Uh, this goes on top, it's basically a cap, but if a spark goes through here, uh, spark goes through here, what it'll do is that'll put the spark out because if you if it's dry, if, if there's a grout, um, and uh, if the spark goes out and hits some grass or trees, you can start a fire. And what this does is uh, that will arrest it, that will stop it. And this, this goes on top. I have two sections of pipe. That's a three foot section. So here again, this will mount to the outside. The chimney will go on top of this outside of that building. When I add the other pipe, this is going to be about level with the top pitch of the roof. Okay, so I'm coming up right here, and it's going to be about level with the top pitch of that roof right here. This part is another section of pipe that uh, that hooks into here. That's going to hook into there. They seem to hook and twist. They stick in there and they twist. And uh, that will go through the wall thimble. That that I was showing you, that's called the wall thimble. And then from there, this part will hook on. And that's the part that goes in the building. There's some flashing that goes on top of that. And like I say, that's as far as I want to try to get today. Hopefully, I'm sure I'll get that far. Anyway. So, anyway, that's kind of the first part of the installation. I wanted, I wanted to catch this part of the... Of the uh, of the process. I just dove in it. I'm learning it. Like I said, I'll take that uh, manual home tonight and read it. And then what I'll do is once I'm finished, uh, I'll put a second part when I get it to a certain degree. That way, when you guys are doing your, if you're doing a stove, if you're doing an installation, whatever I learned during the process, uh, I'll be glad to share in the second video. So here again, uh, this is off the grid at Red Rock Sawmill. The date's November the 14th, 2015, Saturday. The subject today was wood stove installation part one of I'm not sure. You guys take care. Thank you.